Hey folks, Crazy Climber 80 here again, and we're going to wrap up my 20 from 1980 series with game number one. But before we look at game number one, I would like to uh, look at the honorable mentions list, the games that did not quite make my uh, 20 from 1980 cut. And these, these are uh, worth checking out if you haven't uh, heard of them before. We're going to start with Red Baron. Uh, black and white flight simulator. It's very cool. You fly a, a biplane and shoot enemy biplanes. Uh, wireframe uh, kind of 3D look. I really like this. And you can shoot uh, ground targets too. There's also blimps that you can shoot and uh, some of the enemies can shoot you. And you try not to let some of the enemies get behind you. And you can overheat your guns on accident. Boy, I like this game a lot but also Armor Attack. And this was created by Cinematronics and Tim Skelly in 1980. And it has an overlay, a color overlay, and you go around in a maze and you shoot tanks. And you can also shoot helicopters here and there. Try not to get shot. And you can use uh, cover to uh, hide from enemies. And the enemies get faster and faster the further you go. It was kind of cool for its time. I definitely remember seeing this in arcades. And you get uh, increasing bonuses as you get further and further and destroy all the enemies. Next we're going to look at Tank Battalion and this was created by Namco. And I didn't really see this in arcades but it's very cool and there were a number of sequels or follow-ups. You just try to destroy all the enemy tanks in a maze and protect your uh, fortress at the bottom center and the enemies can try to shoot through the bricks and you can shoot through the bricks but above all else you gotta protect that flag you can lose all your lives too to end the game and you can accidentally shoot your own flag don't do that <laughs> very cool game though for its time but uh, next we're gonna look at Polaris and this was kind of a cool sub-warfare game. You're a submarine and you need to shoot all the planes out of the sky. There will also be uh, enemy subs below you. The enemies will pelt you with fire. Once you take out all the, uh, all the enemy planes, then there's going to be, I think, like uh, one last one, yeah and you'll need to destroy him and he'll try to uh, shoot you with bombs as well. Very, very uh, cool game for its time. And uh, next we're gonna look at Ripoff and this was created by Cinematronics and Tim Skelly and you play this uh, mobile uh, vehicle of some sort and you try to protect these triangles at the center of the screen and these enemies try to pick them up and drag them away and if uh, the enemies drop a triangle, it's left where it was. You can't bring it back to the pile in the center, which kind of sucks. The game is kind of hard. I remember seeing this in a number of arcades back in the day. It was kind of cool for its time. Uh, black and white uh, vector game. But uh, next we're going to look at... Crazy Balloon. And this was a cool little uh, skill game. I never saw this in arcades, but... You uh, direct this balloon that wobbles back and forth through this maze of spikes. Obviously, if it touches a spike, boom, you'll lose a balloon. But you try to make your way to the goal as quickly as you can so you can get as much of a bonus as you can. You just have to learn uh, when to move through the maze as it's uh, wobbling one way or the other. Just, just got to learn the timing. Tough, tough game, but but very cool for its time. There will be uh, different obstacles later on that will make life difficult for you. The screen will shift around, or the, the maze layout. There will be uh, moving spikes. And this creeped me out. <laughs> there is a face that will blow your balloon. 
Yikes. <laughs> well, next we're going to look at N-Sub, and this is another uh, submarine warfare game. This was created by uh, Gremlin Sega for the uh, Vic Duel hardware, I believe. And you can shoot upwards, or you can shoot left and right at enemy subs. And the enemy subs are very proficient at shooting you from the left or right. And you uh, need to take out uh, subs that are way above you. And the layout of this game is really weird. It looks like the surface that you're touching there, but there are submarines above you. I'm having trouble trying to make sense of that one. But this was a cool game. Once you eliminate all the, the regular subs, then you have a, uh, a squad of more subs, and you need to eliminate them. And once you eliminate four levels, then you get a mermaid uh, flag. <laughs> Next, we're going to look at Space Encounters by Midway. And this was very cool. You uh, you fly through this ravine, uh, Death Star-like, and shoot at these enemies, and there will be progressively more lucrative enemies appearing and you can be hit by their uh, their debris <laughs> don't let that happen because this is a timed game and you'll lose time um, you can shoot their debris for more points and eventually there will be UFOs that are worth more points and there will be a uh, bonus multiplier or a bonus indicator and you want to shoot the center of it to get all those bonus points but try to reach like 4,000 points before your time runs out to extend your game. And now we're going to look at game number one, and it is obviously Pac-Man, created by Namco and licensed to Bally Midway in the U.S. Um, this was created by Toru Iwatani, who I guess passed, passed away not that long ago. This was an instant classic for obvious reasons. Um, it it's it was a worldwide smash, possibly the most popular game of all time. Uh, spawned a, a bajillion sequels, uh, spin-offs. It set the set the template for what all maze games should be like. But uh, you are the titular hero, Pac-Man, little yellow mouth eating the enemies, and Mr. Iwatani uh, got the idea for Pac-Man from a slice missing out of a pizza. <laughs> the game was originally called Puckman, but uh, U.S. players that you know were were juvenile decided to uh, scratch off part of the piece, so it said Puckman. <laughs> so it was renamed Pac-Man for the U.S. And um, it's it's a maze game where you have to eat all the dots in the in the maze. Uh, there will be four energizers in the corners or power pellets. And they will turn the ghosts that menace you blue, and you can eat the blue ghosts. But eventually they will flash four times, and when they're done flashing the fourth time, they will change back to the dangerous ghosts. There are four ghosts, and they are uh, Blinky, the fastest. He is very dangerous. Speedy Pinky is his real name. He's, he's second most dangerous. Third most dangerous is Inky. He's blue. And... The one that's not nearly as dangerous is Clyde, and he just kind of ambles on his own way. The thing that was kind of cool is the artificial intelligence of the enemies. It was very unique for its time. And we'll go ahead and get started. Very, very, very memorable uh, opening theme. God, this game was super popular. But yeah, your goal is to eat all the dots and the energizers in order to uh, move on to the next level. If, if you do decide to eat the ghosts after eating an energizer or power pellet, then the first one is 200, the next is 400, the third is 800, and the fourth is 1600 if you can eat them all. Don't always go for that uh, top value. You, you really want to try to uh, finish the maze. Uh, there are certain areas of the maze that are, are dangerous, um, and you'll want to uh, you want to eliminate those areas of dots if you can uh, as soon as possible. And that's like the four corners. If they're empty, they can be dangerous. 
uh, to hang around. And the bottom center has a long stretch between any turns. And it'll be good to uh, clear that out soon if you can help it. Before the ghosts really start following you. And yeah, Blinky is the fastest ghost. And if you are eating, uh, if you are eating pellets and he's on your tail, oh, that was close. If you are eating pellets and he's on your tail, he will really catch up to you quickly. Even later in the game, if there's no uh, pellets, he can be right on your tail and possibly catch up because he gets faster and faster later on in the game. You only get one extra life, and that's at 10,000 points. Note that there will be a bonus prize at the bottom center, or at the uh, center of the maze, just under the pen where the ghosts begin. And that prize will increase in value every couple stages. You start off with cherries, and they're a mere 100 points, and then you go to strawberries, they're 300, a peach is 500, a, uh, an apple is 700, grapes are 1,000, and there's like a, a bell, and then a Galaxian from the game. Galaxian makes a debut here, and there's a, uh, there's a key, and the key is the last prize, and they'll just stay the key from that point on. The key is 5,000. Try not to panic in this game. Panicking can easily lead to a death for Pac-Man. You can fake the ghosts out. Uh, you can try to turn one way or another. Whoa. You can lead them to uh, follow you through the exits. The ghosts will slow down as they go through the exits. You will not. There are warp exits, and you uh, reappear on the other side. And this game has intermissions! There's, uh, like three different types of intermission. And after you beat the first two stages, you see the first intermission. Man, this game was so revolutionary, uh, for its time, and several years after as well. This had so many sequels. Uh, the first sequel was the best sequel, I think, Ms. Pac-Man. At some point, uh, Midway decided to uh, abuse their, uh, uh, their uh, or uh, take for granted the Pac-Man franchise, and they'd release some Pac-Man games without Namco's consent. And that led to a bit of a falling out between the two companies, and uh, Namco decided not to let uh, Midway uh, use the name of uh, Pac-Man anymore, or use any uh, elements of Pac-Man in their games. Yeah, you can fake the ghosts out. Even, uh, even the fast ones. Ooh, am I going to get all the ghosts? Darn Skippy. It's, it's not always worth it to try to get that top value. There have been numerous patterns made to ensure that you get all the, all the dots, eat all the ghosts, and you can look them up on, on the internet. You'll find a lot of them. But uh, players made patterns that, that made you be able to marathon this game. Or at least up until the point where you got to level 256. That is when a kill screen appears. And that will, uh... Whoa. <laughs> like I said, do not panic. Learn to uh, fake the ghosts out. The kill screen will, uh... It doesn't kill you automatically or anything, but, um... You will not be able to complete the game. And we'll look at that screen later on. But note that when you eat a pellet, a power pellet or energizer, the ghosts reverse direction. You can usually follow uh, Clyde, the uh, orange ghosts, and not worry, because he just kind of goes on on his own path. Um, any ghost can actually reverse direction if they 
if they want, but they, they seldom do. They don't do it very often. So oftentimes you can follow a ghost to safety, especially Clyde. But that's good to remember. There is sort of a, a pattern for a, a portion of each level that I've noticed that I can do. And it'll allow you to safely get a, a good chunk of the, the dots done. Plus, um... Uh, plus get the first prize. And the prizes show up after you get X amount of points. And I don't remember how many points it is, but... Ah, damn it. I wanted that apple. There we go. Even though the apple's just 700. You don't tend to score a ton in this game. I mean... At least not early on when the prizes aren't worth that much. But, uh, eat... Well, ah, crap. Eating all the ghosts will, uh do more for your score than you might imagine. But don't make that your life's goal if you if you don't need to. And now we have uh, the ghost catching his costume on the uh, on a nail. <laughs> I like the, the first intermission uh, where a giant Pac-Man comes after him. That inspired a uh, one of the sequels, Super Pac-Man. I think I first saw this game at a bowling alley where my dad bowled league. But yeah, I could I could understand the extreme popularity of this. Yeah, fake ghosts out so that they go through the tunnel, because like I said, they slow down when they get to the tunnel. You do not. And remember that you can turn on a dime whenever you want to. Use it to fake ghosts out, because they they do not often turn around. There will be a point later in the game where uh, the energizers or power pellets do not even let the ghosts turn blue. They flash automatically. Or even later in the game, they will. Oops. <laughs> they will uh, not even tr not even flash. They will just reverse direction and still be dangerous ghosts. And no, now that the prizes are starting to get a little lucrative, there is uh, there is now grapes, and the grapes are a thousand points. Yeah, fake fake the ghosts out to to follow you through the tunnels, especially especially uh, Blinky and Pinky, the fastest ghosts. Don't panic. Deaths often occur if you either panic or if you trap yourself in a long area with very few turns. And notice that the turns... With the turns... You can, uh... There, got that. Ah, crap, that was dumb. Note that with the turns, you make the turns faster than the ghosts. If there is a ghost hot on your tail, like Blinky, and you keep making turns, you might be able to shake them a little bit enough so they got a little breathing room. I, rem <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, um, when I first played this, I thought you could always eat the ghosts. So I tried to eat the ghosts when they were uh, not blue or flashing. I was like, hey, why did I die? <laughs> I needed to watch the uh, attract mode more or something. <laughs> but that that area that I'm doing right now, that works on every maze. That little part of the pattern. So yeah, do not panic and try not to uh try not to get trapped in that long space at the bottom center. There is a trick you can do if you need to take a potty break or grab a sandwich or something at the start of a level where that uh, T is just under the ghost pin, you can go right and up and stay there. And the ghosts will never catch you. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? But uh, do that if to, to start a maze before you eat any other dots. Just go right and up. 
and to the, uh, you know, just, just under the T. And, uh, and just stay there for a while. The ghost, the ghost will never catch you. And that's just to start any maze. So do that if you need to go, go pee or whatever. But yeah, this this game was so popular. It had bajillion sequels um, and spin-offs. Oh yeah, the uh, Energizer power pellet does not does not la last very long at all now. And there is the Galaxian as the prize. I'm not going to go after it. Yikes. E damn it. See, I didn't panic. I, I waited. I waited until the coast was clear. And you'll notice that the ghost's eyes will move towards the direction that they're going to turn even before they make that turn. That helps you... Uh, Plan the ghost's move, or plan where they're gonna move. And now, uh, yeah, he lost his uh, he lost his suit, and he's basically a little slug carrying the uh, ghost sheet. <laughs> yeah, Ms. Pac-Man, the the uh, first sequel to Pac-Man, was also a smash hit, and it's it's definitely one of my favorite games. That one was uh, made with little input by Namco. It was it was actually created by a company called General Computing Corporation, who made a Foo Fight and Quantum for Atari. And they they basically made kind of a hack of of Pac-Man called Crazy Auto. And Midway uh, wanted to well. And I got him too. Midway wanted them to uh, make another Pac-Man game, and uh, the elements that they had of, of ah crap of Crazy Auto, Midway liked, and they wanted to incorporate that in the next Pac-Man game. But Namco did uh, give did allow this f uh, for Midway, and they said that uh, or they gave a little creative input too. But later on, uh, relationships with uh, Midway and uh, Namco soured, and they uh, didn't want them to make uh, Pac-Man games anymore. And that that basically, I think, started with uh, the game uh, Pac-Man Plus, which was generally a hack of Pac-Man without Namco's consent. Yes, uh, make those make those ghosts follow you. They will eventually turn around on their own volition, but not not that often. So you can uh, you can often follow them to safety. Yeah, there's the bell, and that is three thousand points. The uh, uh, Galaxian was two thousand points, and then the next the next prize will be the key. And the key is worth 5,000 points. So try to get that if you can. And that will be the last prize. And it'll just keep going on and on and on. Keys. And again... Uh, 200 and... Or the 256th stage is where uh, you will get the kill screen. And we will look at that later. But man, Pac-Man was such a huge success. You knew this was going to be number one on my 20 from 1980 list. I'm really looking forward to uh, my 20 from 1981 list. And uh, I know I I did this list a long time ago, but I'm re-uploading these with with better uh, gameplay, better sound, and uh, and a cool uh, little time capsule of the year. And we had uh, 1980, uh, a bunch of stuff from 1980, and I'm going to do that for 1981 next. Yikes. But again, do not panic if you can help it. Ah, I wanted that prize, damn it. Do not panic, just learn. Ah, uh, I'm screwed. Oh, no. Ah, god damn it, go away. Clyde's not supposed to follow me like that. 
<laughs> I panicked. I was... I could have maybe found my way out of that. But uh, try not to panic. Lure the ghosts through the... Uh, through the exit so they slow down when chasing you. And try to avoid getting trapped in... Uh, in the bottom center or in the uh, corners after the energizer power pellets are eaten. And yeah, later on you will get the key and there's the key. It's 5,000 and then late, still later on it'll just be all keys. And again later on there will be uh, the ghosts will not turn blue or flesh and here is the kill screen. There is, uh, there is text and jumbled graphics along the right side and there's no dots that you can eat over there. There's there's just no way to end that level. But that is the kill screen. Pac-Man was so darn popular it spawned an album and a top he 10 hit song by Buckner and Garcia called Pac-Man Fever. I used to own that album. A lot of songs with uh, video game sounds in them. And the songs were about the video games. And it also spawned a Hanna-Barbera cartoon of Pac-Man from uh, 1982 to 1984. I used to watch that. It had a very cool uh, opening theme that was uh, reused in uh, Pac-Land, one of the Pac-Man sequels. <laughs> I used to watch that cartoon a lot. But that was my number one game in the 20 from 1980 series, Pac-Man by Namco and Midway 1980. Well, I thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy my upcoming series. Uh, this was my 20 from 1980 series, and I hope you enjoy my 20 from 1981 series. Have a good summer, everybody, and I will see you later. Take it easy and stay cool. Bye-bye.